Hello YouTube, this is b 1111 Gamer Type, you're doing through the Welsh Gamer, the Welsh Gamer is speaking, and this is Xbox News. Now it's been a while since I've done some Xbox News, like in an actual video, usually I do a bit of controversial media bias fanboy bullshit. But, without further ado, I'm going to hit some of these topics, because I think these are three great topics that need to be covered, and I just wanted to do my own piece, and I don't care if I get one view, or 200 views, or 3,000 views, I just want to get my thoughts out there on some of these topics. So without further ado, at number one we have... GameStop says to be impressed with the Scorpio and that it's a very powerful unit. They follow up by saying, with physical games having a clinical decline in sales and stuff like that, GameStop has very strong cards to play with Microsoft Scorpio. Contradictory to what Phil said, because obviously Phil said at GDC that um, in an interview, not GDC, my apologies, the Unlocked podcast. Um, he basically stated that the Scorpio is a, is a premium product for the hardcore gamer. And for me, as a, as a viewer of that show, I took that as um, it was aimed at the hardcore gamer. It wasn't going to be for the avid gamer. It wasn't going to be a casual machine. It wasn't going to be like for, for, for any gamer. It was just strictly like, like the elite controller for the, the elite audience, the people that want to have the elite, the elite premium product. Uh, but contradictory to what Phil said in that interview, GameStop says it's going to be a very gamer-friendly machine with a hell of a lot of power. And they also say, and I quote, we are finally, you know, GameStop, we are finally very impressed with the Scorpio. They uh, also followed on, on this same article saying that they can't disclose too much of what they know, because obviously they've probably had their hands on the machine and been able to have a little feel of what it's all about. But they said, um, not that they can disclose too much, too much of what they know, but it's a very powerful system, truly built for 4K, very game-centric, and they certainly expect a lot of great games to come to the system. Now, I can only assume they mean third-party and first-party. But, segueing, speaking of first-party, next on the, uh, on the Xbox News lineup, I have Phil says that first-party games is critical. For the Scorpio success. <clears throat> now we all out there as gamers, we've all been on the YouTube in the YouTube streets for a while now, and that's one thing that Xbox gets a lot of hate for is its first-party lineups. Um, it's been a lot of like you know whether it be fanboys or just fans of the system or whatever fanboys of the other system. Xbox has definitely had its finger, you know, the finger pointed at it for only having Gears, Forza, and Halo. While I'm not going to apo like, you know, apologise on behalf of Xbox for having three of the most successful IPs in gaming history consistently every year, every three years, you know, Halo is a great franchise, as is Gears, as is Forza. But taking the fanboy hat off now, I will agree that for any console success, you do need a lot of first-party exclusives. Um, you, you know. Um, it, you, you know, you need to expand your library. You can't, you know, survive on just the same successful three all the time. You know, there's all, it's all about innovating and expanding and growing. And uh, Phil is basically stating that. He states that a lot of focus in the last few years has gone into rebuilding Xbox Live, the interface, the OS, and obviously the hardware with the, OS, with the 1S and Scorpio. But now, that same level of focus is going to be bringing first-party games. So obviously the same amount of focus and dedication they've had into bringing out the One S and now the Scorpio, so the hardware side of things, rebuilding Xbox Live, making their, making their um, services better than ever, which they have completely been better than ever since, the whole, since Phil Spencer took over, basically. They've had a huge turnaround. Um, but it's always growing, always getting better, feedback, always listening to feedback of the consumer, and it's just forever growing. And now Phil has actually said that that same level of focus is going to be going into bringing their first party games to the table. So you've got to give him, you know, if you can really appreciate what he's saying there, the same level of focus... That, that, that's pretty exciting to, to, for, for that to come out of Phil's mouth because when he's got his head on something, he fucking makes it happen and he's very one with the consumer and one for the gamer. So safe to say E3 should be very interesting this year and very intrigued to see what they announce. Now last on the list is Games with Gold for April. We have Rise, Son of Rome um, coming out April 1st and The Walking Dead Season 2 by Telltale April 16th, and alongside those games for backwards compatibility, we have Darksiders 
also coming out alongside Rise, Son of Rome, April 1st, and alongside Walking Dead Season 2 by Telltale, we have Assassin's Creed Revelations, backwards compat, um, April 16th. Now, I won't say a whole lot about this. The only reason this is on the list of topics I wanted to talk about today is the fact that Rise, Son of Rome is Games of Gold. Now, you could take this either way, people. Rise, Son of Rome is a very old game. It's been out since 2013. So, inevitably, it was probably going to be Games of Gold anyway. So, I won't... I'm not going to look too much into this. But if you go back on my library of videos, I'll link it in the description below. Um, I did um, do a video a while back about a leak for Rise Son of Rome 2, the sequel, allegedly called Rise the Empire. And I'm just wondering if, you know, April, you know, it's only it's only another month away, uh, for, you know, month and a bit. You know, we're, we're creeping ever so slowly towards E3. And I am adamant, based on that leak and based on, like, the hype, that we are going to see an announcement for Rise 2 or Rise the Empire. And I'm just wondering if April Games with Gold, Rise Son of Rome is one of the main titles, you know, given away for free. I'm wondering if that's so a lot of fans of the game can, you know, pick it up again and play it. And even people that have never played Rise before can pick it up and play it um, and have a, and try it out uh, to get a taste for it. Kind of almost like a slap in the face, like, wake up, this is what Rise Son of Rome is. Rise 2 is on the way, but obviously they haven't said anything yet. But I'm just wondering if this is a subtle hint to the fan base and and also a bit of a wake-up call to people who didn't get their hands on Rise Son of Rome um, for a potential announcement to E3 for Rise 2. Only time will tell, people, but I just wanted to add that on the list so you at least know what's coming Games of Gold this year. That's, you know, the main and this, um, this month, April, coming up. Um, but also I just wanted to give my two cents on this whole Rise thing because I'm pretty certain we're going to see an announcement for Rise 2. That's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. If this is the kind of video you like and you want to see more Xbox news videos like this, please comment below and let me know because it's not very often I do dabble in just news uh, videos. I usually like to talk about fanboys and media bias and stuff like that because it is my favourite thing to do. But I do enjoy doing these videos as well and this is a few topics that I really wanted to cover. So please let me know what you think. If it's something you like, drop a like. If, it's, if, it's, if you've got any... Um, you know, criticism, constructive criticism, please put it in the comment section below. Feedback is always welcome. Thank you very much for watching. That is The Welsh Gamer, home of the Dragon X podcast, with my buddies Eroc8150 and Microbox of X. Thank you very much for coming by and watching my channel and watching my video. That's The Welsh Gamer, out.